A biobank is a bit like a bank or a library. Only instead of storing books or money, we store samples that contain the cells and DNA of animals. Most cells contain DNA. It is this substance that allows organisms to develop, function, grow and reproduce. Each individual or animal has a unique DNA sequence that helps build our unique bodies. The DNA molecule is made up of two long chains, each twisted around one another. Each chain is made from a sequence of chemicals called bases, which together make up an organism's genetic code. By studying the sequence of the bases in the DNA, we can learn a lot about that individual and more broadly about their species. Let's see how we store the samples to preserve the DNA. Storing samples correctly is critical so that scientists are able to study and read the DNA sequence. Water, UV light and enzymes can damage the DNA chains, breaking them into tiny pieces. To stop this happening, we store the samples away from light and keep them frozen at very low temperatures. This can be as low as minus 80 degrees Celsius and even minus 196 degrees Celsius. That's colder than the Antarctic. Each of our big biobank freezers store over 20,000 samples at minus 80 degrees Celsius. When storing this many samples, it's important to keep them well organized. To help us do this, and so we can find them easily, each sample is stored in a barcoded tube. The barcodes on the tube look a bit like the ones you see in a shop, and each is unique to a single sample. And, just like in a shop, scientists use a scanner to help read the barcodes. When we scan a barcode, we can find information about the sample and the animal it came from in our biobank database. So, let's look at what samples we have in our freezer. Here we have a drop of blood from the very rare Amur leopard. And we have another one from a Gentoo penguin. In fact, there can be more species in one biobank freezer than a whole zoo looks after. Each sample tube is small, but as DNA itself is tiny, we can get a lot of DNA out of the smallest of samples. Just a drop of blood or even a few skin cells from the end of a hair. In a laboratory, the DNA is extracted from the sample so we can read its genetic sequence and compare it to sequences from other animals. Plants have DNA too, and you can have a go at extracting DNA yourself at home. Let's see why we might need to study these DNA samples. Unfortunately, many species on our planet are struggling to survive. The climate crisis, habitat loss and illegal hunting are making it difficult for them to live in the wild and their numbers are reducing. For example, there are only about 100 Amur leopards left in the wild and conservationists are working hard to prevent species extinction. These scientists can use samples from the biobank to understand the species' genetic diversity and this helps them to protect them in the wild. Genetic information also helps zoos and aquaria manage captive populations to keep them healthy. These zoo animals are important, just in case the species needs to be reintroduced to the wild one day. So, while a freezer might not look like the obvious piece of lab equipment, each one in our lab contains a lot of very important samples. We hope our work can help stop species from becoming extinct in the wild, but for more information about how our biobank samples can help conservation, please visit cryoarks.org.